So what exactly do we need to know to get a widget working? How does a launcher even know we have a widget the user could choose to add to their home screens? There's two main pieces, an app widget provider XML file and an app widget provider class. The app widget provider XML file is what describes your widget's attributes, such as its size, whether it can be resized, and a preview image, which helps users get a sense of what your widget will look like before adding it to their home screen. The app widget provider is what holds all the logic for creating the actual widget views, filling the views with the correct data, and setting up the click listeners so your widgets respond to touch. One thing to keep in mind is that users aren't limited to just one instance of your widget. They could have a bunch of different sized widgets with potentially different data. That's one reason why part of your app widget provider info can specify a configuration activity, a special one-time setup activity that appears when users select your widget. While we won't use this for Sunshine, you can imagine if Sunshine supported multiple locations at once, we could use a configuration activity to select which location we want it to display in each widget. So let's start simple. We'll build the one by one version of our today widget with some static data, say sunny and 76 degrees Fahrenheit, a nice 24 Celsius. What would our app widget provider info look like? In fact, there's only a few required attributes. First here is initial layout. This is the XML layout to be used by default. Min height and min width are what determine how many cells in the launcher are used. Note that the number and size of cells can change based on the device or launcher being used. A good rule of thumb is this formula, which works well for all default launchers. In any case, you should build your widget such that it's flexible enough to support slight variations in the size available. The last attribute we can see here is the update period millis. By default, the system will wake up your device at approximately this interval and call your app widget provider to update your widget with a minimum update period of a half hour. However, if you have static data, you don't want to wake up the data if it's in deep sleep. Or if you have another component already controlling the flow of new data into your app, such as Sunshine Sync Adapter, you can use zero to disable this functionality and prevent unnecessary work. That's all we need to get started.